everybody? Asley here, uh, getting ready to do a little tutorial on how to use the twist sop along with the fractal sop to get some really uh, kind of cool particle behavior um, like the videos you saw at the beginning of this. Um, now we're starting from scratch here. I'm just going to do concepts with this. Uh, so it's not going to look exactly like anything I showed, but you should be able to see pretty clearly um, how you could arrive there with a little bit of tweaking. <clears throat> um, okay, so uh, small disclaimer on this one. Um, this is not a great uh, technique if you are looking for something that's going to run uh, at 60 frames per second in real time. Um, since most of our operations are going to be happening before we get to our render network, or rather before we get to our instancing setup, um, a lot of that, uh, a lot of that information is going to have to be handled by the CPU instead of the GPU. So it tends to suck up a lot of frame rate, uh, as you're going to see in a second here. So anyway, um, if this is uh, going to be used for a live performance. My recommendation would be pre-rendering this and then triggering it with a movie file and some, some various other things. But anyway, um, that aside, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and set a few things up before we uh, really dig in here. So first I'm going to set up all the instancing so that we can actually see what's going on. So I just have a sphere sop connected to a null here. Um, and then I am going to set up a very basic instancing network with a rectangle sop going to a geo. And then if you've been around for a minute, you know what's coming. We're just going to throw a camera and a light. Uh, these are just the, the three components of our render network. And then we're going to add a render top. Boom. And then they're all feeding into that. Great bang this out to uh, an RGB key so we have a black background and then we'll set a null to display so now we can see what's going on here. Cool. Okay, so uh, since we're instancing this we want we're gonna make a particle system so we want this to be very small. So uh, let's do we may have to adjust this, but we'll do uh, we'll just do 0 0.01 for now. Um, okay, so we're gonna come into our geo comp here and go to the third panel over instance and turn instancing on, and then we're gonna grab uh, our null here. Oops, and we're just gonna drag that onto our default instancing op. And then we should have some new options in our menus here. So we're going to, in the translate section, we're going to set X to P0, Y to P1, and Z to P2. So now we have particles showing uh, all the vertices of our spheres, and each particle is being represented by a 0 0.01 sized rectangle in whatever the hell our units are. Pixels, I guess. Um, okay, so uh, we were just doing that so that we can see uh, the effects of, of what we're about to do. Um, just because when you use a twist sop um, in here, you don't, unless you uh, go in and uh, make the viewer active and show points, you don't, you don't really see the behavior change as well as when you are looking at the vertices. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so a couple other things I like on this. I'm just going to set up my sphere a little better here. I want a lot of rows, so whatever your computer can handle. Uh, but I don't want a lot of columns. So I want these kind of stripes. Um, so I'll do 12 columns for now. That's fine. Um, and the as this begins to move... Um, these are going to appear more as lines the more rows you have. So we'll leave it at a thousand for now because that'll run pretty close to real time actually, but um, it, it looks better with more. So 
All right, so let's start getting into uh, actually the what we're going to do with the technique. So I'm going to insert. Uh, I'm going to insert a twist. Where the hell is it? There it is. And then um, let's just show what that does first. So, uh, so with the twist, it I mean it does basically what it sounds like. It grabs the vertices and it spins them around an axis. Um, depending on what strength you have this slider set to here. You can set the primary axis. I'm going to set it to Z so that the twists are um, about the axis that is pointing at us. So you can just sort of see the behavior better. Um, now the other thing that uh, you can control here is the roll off. So if you set this to zero, the entire shape is impacted, which um, you know, you lose kind of the, the twist effect. It needs to, uh, I guess, be constrained on some level to really see this behavior. Um, so by default, it's set to one, but um, if I just have this cranked up, you can really see what it does. So it sort of, as I um, raise this number, the affected area seems to shrink towards the center. So the higher I have this, the smaller the impacted area. Um, so depending on how much of our shape we want to mess with, we can adjust our roll off. And, and of course, both of these features can be animated, which is, which is what we're going to do. Um, let's just show uh, the other part of this first. So that's the twist. Um, we're also going to use a fractal to, uh, to repeat this behavior. Um, so let's adjust a few things on this because this is not, not what I'm going for. So I want to have a fixed boundary. I also want to use vertex normals. Now you can see we have a much different thing going on here. Um, if I set divisions down to one, I think it's, it's a little easier to see what's happening uh, with the, the fractal saw. I don't exactly know the math here. I just know sort of the layman's concept of what a fractal is, which is just recurring patterns uh, at every level of scale. So um, at least conceptually what I think is happening here is it's taking everything that precedes it and um, putting it into like a, 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 a summing function. It's been a long time since I took a calculus class, but um, and then repeats the, the behavior um, at various levels. So uh, short version, it's taking the twist that we just made and it's doing it again, um, you know, further down the line. Um, and we can adjust various things with this. Uh, primary thing we're going to see difference with is the number of divisions. Um, this also increases our number of particles, so we're going to see a drop in frame rate pretty dramatically. Uh, so for kind of the fractal motions we're going to get when um, I start to animate this in a second here, I'm going to leave it uh, with the divisions pretty low. I'm going to leave both of these on. Let me, let's just mess with some things, figure out what's going on here. So, all right, so there's something happening along the vector normals of our particles. Uh, when we scale it and we don't use vertex normals, it looks like when we have those turned on, nothing happens. So that's what's that's our scale. Um, if I turn fixed boundary off, what do we lose? Smoothness adheres closer to the lines. Scale adheres closer to the lines. So we can accomplish the same thing here if I do two divisions there. All right, interesting. And then you can also change the direction. Let's see. Okay, so that's if we have in the y direction. That's if we have in the x direction. Oops. Looks like the Gucci logo kind of. All right, so. Cool. So those are things that happen with the particle behavior if you are not using these fixed boundaries. Um, 
It looks like you can accomplish the same thing by having your scale and smoothness set to zero, whatever. <clears throat> there we go. That's what I'm looking for. So the other thing I have done that's produced some cool results uh, is I've put more twists in here, but I've set the axis differently. So we have the z-axis on the uh, current, or maybe it's still on the x-axis. No, this one's z. This one is now on the x-axis. So if I do that again, we have two things happening. One, we're twisting the already twisted shape, and then we're also running it through the fractal stop here. So let's go ahead and do it one more time just to really put some burden on my CPU. And uh, let's go ahead and do the y-axis this time. And then there you go, you can see. So if I increase the roll off on a few of these, I may start to get some pretty cool isolated bits of behavior, so it's not quite so chaotic. So that's pretty. Um, now, that's fine, it's just it's not moving. So uh, the move for me would be to use the looping noise technique from Polyhop. Uh, so that would be, we need a timeline chop, we need set range end to on. Send that out to math. Combine our channels with the divide function to normalize that number. And then we need to put that into a lookup chop. And then we need to make the second channel for a lookup chop. So we need a pattern. Um, we need sine wave is what we need, and that's what it defaults to, so that's fine. I'm going to Command C, Command V that to get a second pattern. Uh, but that one's going to be a cosine instead of sine. We're going to send these into a merge. If you want to know why this works, I would suggest looking at Polyhop's tutorial on uh, looping noise. Um, and he explains this in, in detail why this works. Uh, I go into it a little more in some other ones, but uh, I use this all the time. It's very handy little chop setup. So, um, okay, so our our twist strength parameter runs from 0 to 360. So uh, let's just see what happens if we set up a math with our loop over here and set our our chop here is running from uh, negative one to one, so I'm going to change my range here, negative one to one, to be uh, zero to 360. So now this is probably moving pretty fast because it's based on the length of my timeline, so I'm going to increase this a little bit. Um, here we go. Uh, Now there are probably, actually, there are definitely are much easier ways to do this, but if you had a song set at a particular tempo, you could, in theory, um, set this up to loop uh, in time with the song. If you have the BPM, you could just do some quick math and figure that out, and then this would work as, uh, as a really, really wonky way of doing audio reactivity. Anyway, it just occurred to me right now, so there I've said it it's out there all right so anyway we can um, use these two channels to animate our strength parameters on the chop and then now we have movement so if we do this on all of them uh, maybe I want to alternate channels so I'm going to do channel 2 controlling my second twist here and then I'll go back to channel one for, uh, for my third one. Cool, all right, 
right, so hey, there we go. We got a thing happening now. So you can see, um, even with not a crazy number of particles, just 12,000, um, we're already getting a little slow here. Let me, let me turn all the viewers off, see if that buys us anything. Not really. Um, I still wouldn't want to run this as a real-time thing. It's under 30. Uh, but let me just show you how I'd, how I'd polish this up. Um, some things you can play with. Uh, I mean, you can mess around with the with all of this and just sort of see what happens with the particle behavior. It's probably put that back on defaults. Um, I mean, you could animate this parameter so it moves in and out of being. Uh, something that appears to be lines versus something that's more obviously particles. Um, if you don't want to see spaces, you can, you know, sacrifice some more frames and add to your number of rows. So that just cost me 10 frames per second, but if we're, if we're looking for things to render, then, you know, it's fine. Uh, this is basically all there is to the technique um, you can mess around with uh, different SOPs as the uh, parent input here um, I haven't really messed around with this with the actually no I have tried it with the Taurus but um, you can try different shapes for the instancing you can add some camera movement around this thing uh, there's there's all sorts of stuff um, I like to add a little uh, little feedback just to get some uh, some trails on this. Um, so I'm, I'm just grabbing uh, the simple feedback image filter from the palette browser. that to taste uh, and then obviously if you want this to look a little a little cleaner you can uh, you know go more particles smaller particles smaller particles always are gonna look more more like uh, more like lines more smaller particles everything will look smoother um, <clears throat> So this is with very small particles. Uh, if I, if you want to see how this looks, it took me embarrassingly long to figure this out, but if you want to see how this will look rendered after you export it, you can just click off real time and it'll show you slower than it would be, but it'll show you what each frame will actually look like. So in this case, uh, you know, this is way too low res for me. It's uh, kind of bumming me out. So I would set this higher, um, probably increase this a good bit because those trails are not as intense as I want. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's, that's, uh, that's plenty to play with right there. So that is, uh, that is the twist and fractal sop, just uh, kind of my recent explorations with it. Hope you enjoy. Um, tag me if you make something out of this. See you in the next one.